Um, Dr. Connolly is a professor of sociology at Central Arizona College and a realtor with Caldwell Banker Realty in Scottsdale. She is a fifth generation cradle Episcopalian. How about that? She is currently the Carl and Virginia Washington, Arizona Union of Black Episcopalians chapter president. Dawn has been active in youth, young adult, women, and justice ministries, and has advocated for inclusion of all, locally, provincially, nationally, in the Episcopal Church. She also represented the Episcopal Church worldwide on, nas on the National Council of Churches and World Council of Churches Committees. Don is currently a three-time deputy to General Convention elected to represent the Diocese of Arizona. In her spare time, <laughs> she loves horseback riding, hiking, traveling, attending concerts, serving others, and putting a smile on a stranger's face. And by the way, she did that for me the first time I met her at, at Diocesan Convention. That smile put a smile on my face and in my heart. Welcome, Dr. Connolly. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh. I just ask a quick prayer. Just God, thank you for bringing us all together today because you are the one who unites us all. Remove me and use me and let the spirits of those who hear my voice be open to what you have for us to all learn. We ask this in and through your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Even though I'm fifth generation Episcopalian, I stepped out a little bit and heard a little bit about this music, so. <laughs> Expanded. Um, so my first question, I'm very interactive. I, don't, I will not talk, talk with, at you for 50 minutes. Um, what brings you here today? Or what do you know about UBE? We want to know more. <laughs> well, Scott my, says we want to know more. Want to know more? Okay, great. Um, after this workshop, I will give you brochures. You know, the Episcopal culture will, you can read about UBE. But I want to talk more today about why UBE and how we can get to the point of completing the mission of UBE. I played that song, um, Order My Steps. It's just one of those powerful songs that touches us. And it comes from a scripture now, biblical scholars in here. I use the version that I liked. It's called the voice translation. Um, clergy, is that like the one, like, don't use that one? No. <laughs> Um, that scripture is Psalm 119, 133 to 136. And it says, guide my steps in the ways of your word and do not let any sin control me. Rescue me from the torment of my human oppressors so that I may live according to your decrees. Let your face shine upon your servant and help me to learn what you require. My eyes shed rivers of tears whenever people fail to keep your teaching. And the question that comes to mind, how much do we strive to be better than we were a minute ago, an hour ago, a day ago, week ago, sometimes even a moment ago? So, on your tables, you have papers. What I'd like you to do, and it's your level of comfort. It may just be a conversation you have with yourself, but let's take a few minutes, and those of you at home have the PDF. Um, and that is, reflect upon the areas of your life that would, you would like to approve, improve upon as it relates to being a better servant of Christ. Reflect on those areas of your life that you'd like to improve upon 
as it relates to being a better servant of Christ. Just take a few minutes just in the silence to write those down and if you feel comfortable discussing with those at your table. Okay, thank you. Does anybody care to share what you wrote? Is anybody? Yes. Oops. Oh, sure. oh the microphone's up. Yes. Oh. Hi, my name is Debbie. And I feel um, I want to better serve God by to step out of my comfort zone and listen or see where I can help or serve others. I'm Tish. Be a better anonymous servant carrying the light of continence, of the light of God through soul-centered eyes, seeing in humility and passion and action. My name is Jim Hatfield, and I think it's a, a shortened version of what these folks have just said. Uh, I'm a child of the 60s, and that was one that believed in action and being a part of the movement. And how does this person make a difference to bring all societies together and be inclusive in love? How do I do that? I'm not just saying that would be a good thing to do. I'm saying, how do I do that? Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. A better listener, more patience. Barbara on Zoom says to be less reactive and more responsive, yeah. being a peaceful presence in the world. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Okay, part of my back. <laughs> You're writing very well. I'm Amba Lema. And one of the things I put was to be a more generous listener, right underneath more patient. So it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Judy, and I'm just uh, working on less judgment. Two more that I see. Okay. I'm Don, and I need to be more forgiving. I'm Sally, and I have a longer list. I want more confidence, more self-respect, more fearlessness, joy, joy, and more joy, generosity, peace and trust, other-centeredness, and this last one is going to cost me to say it out loud. Wealthy. Um, and, but I, I'm aware of what the question is, and it's not for self-service. All of these things are things I regard as resources that I'd like to be able to share more generously. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. I, I need to do all of the above. No. <laughs> Thank, and I added to my list. We all chuckle with patience. Um, um, I'm still under construction in that area. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. <coughs> Thank you for these responses. Um, 
I want to, want, uh, thank you for sharing these. I want to relate those to the seven areas that UBE stands for. The first is spirituality. And, you know, um, there's an awareness of Christ and his presence in our lives every day. And so your ongoing homework, as it relates to those of you who shared your items that you'd like to improve upon and those who have um, written them down, and that is Google the scripture that can help you get to the place God wants you to be as it relates to these areas. Who here uses, um, who here Googles everything? Anybody here a Google person? Yeah. <laughs> now, I was telling Braden, I'm, I'm a work in progress with technology, but where are my Alexa people? Alexa. <laughs> um, Alexa's nosy. Siri? Yeah. <laughs> the first and only time I used Siri I turned on an iPad that my college gave me, and I was hitting the wrong button. And Siri was talking. I thought it was the on and off button. Siri was talking, and she said something, and I was like, oh, be quiet. And her response was, that's not nice. <laughs> Siri and I have been done ever since. <laughs> But in Googling, or maybe Siri or Alexa, if you want to work on judgment, what are the scriptures that can help me be less judgmental? You know, if we want to work on soul-centered eyes, how can I see the world through God's eyes? Google that, and what is the scripture? That's why I started with that song, Order My Steps, because every answer we need is right there in the, the gift of the Bible and Scripture. Okay. So spirituality. Second one, and this word is a loaded word and has multiple buzz, buzzation. Yes, I make up words, okay? <laughs> and that is diversity. Oh, my gosh. Um, I'd like you in your groups to discuss and then, uh, then each group will report back, what is diversity? What does it look like? And who is at the table? So just take a few minutes. I wish we could do a group with you all here, but um, I'll welcome your sharing as well. Should I? Oh, oh, I already bowed to him once. I mean, he's you know, <laughs> the tech guru. So in your groups, what is diversity? What does it look like? Who's at the table? Okay, which group would like to share first? And I'm looking also at the online group as well. Okay. okay, one moment. Okay, I see your table, and then Robert's coming with the mic after yours. My, my name is Gail, um, and I'm attributing this to Becky. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my idea. Diversity is a tapestry or quilt or anything woven together with all multiple threads. We came up with uh, our table as absorbing, appreciating, respecting, inclusive, listening, a beloved community, no barriers, inclusive makes the pie sweeter.
we can share each other's life experience and then walk together in the life experience. And to overcome the difference in finances. I have some from Zoom who would like to share. Okay. Um, yep. I will, I've put in the um, chat. What the Lord House is doing for Black History Month, which is a woman who's doing a two-day event for Black History Month, which is a woman who's doing a two-week-only show called Most Mosaics. And she writes, and it'll be on the website, Christian, in just a minute, yeah. Mosaics, as a collection, highlights Marva's artistic, artistic process she utilizes the concept and definition of mosaic, cultural mosaic, this is the important part. Cultural mosaic is the mix of ethnic groups, languages, and cultures that coexist within society. The idea of a cultural mosaic is intended to suggest a form of multiculturalism different from other systems such as the melting pot. So what she's doing is, is work launched and put them together to make her work better going to be on good depths in terms of diversity. Thank you. Okay. I, uh, I have two. I have uh, okay. Tom and Bruce. Uh -huh. We basically focused on the lack of sameness, not looking for people just like me or who think like me or who have the same identical values or the same identical perspectives. So lack of sameness uh, becomes a hallmark of broadening our socioeconomic affiliations, our value system, and our attitudes. So we were focused on the um, mosaic and tapestry theme as well. And Tom Baker came up with uh, differences in characteristics that together make us the whole. take my little snapshot of that in a second as well. <sighs> Scripture, there are five Bible verses that teach us to have a heart for variety. There is neither, Galatians 3, 28, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Doesn't the world, and I'm a sociologist, doesn't the world teach us to separate but doesn't give us the tools to reconnect in this very way? Yes. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of the many. Revelation 7, 9, 10. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Colossians 1, 16 through 17. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible 
whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And just something in our worldly humanness, when we look at others, a question to ask ourselves, do we look at others in the form of difference? Or do we look at others, even who are extremely different, as still God created? James 2, 1 through 4. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Ooh, what a word, favoritism. We remember that from like kindergarten, right? <laughs> Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, Here's a good seat for you. But say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? You think about it. And that, that example is something that we do. Let, let's be real. We're about to get real. <laughs> Let, let's be real. We, we do that, you know? I mean, we would like to think that we don't. But some way, shape, or form, there are times when we've all failed that test when we come in contact with someone who's different than us. Or as someone said, lack of the sameness. I like that. I like that. Let me take a picture. Okay. So that's diversity. You, um, I think we know what that looks like. And I can tell some beautiful examples up here. I thank you for sharing that, sharing those. The next part of UBE, inclusion. Definition, the act or state of including or being included within a group or structure. The practice or policy of providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized such as those who have physical or intellectual disabilities and members of minority groups, 